So, with the recent release of Chapter 3, we've gotten a lot more lore. In particular, there's a lot of focus on guilt and whether the player knew what was happening. So that got me thinking, who did and didn't know about the child experiments? And that's what we'll be trying to figure out today. Using the Puppy Playtime Wikia, we're gonna go over every character listed as human to see who knew and who didn't. And just to get out of the way, we're obviously not gonna go over all of the orphans that would later become toys because... Uh, oh man, uh, I wonder if the toys knew that the toys are people. God, get sarcasm aside, let's hop right in. First off, the player. See, the player character clearly holds a lot of guilt for what happened back in Playtime Co. However, the thing is, there's numerous points in the nightmares that seem to indicate we didn't know what was happening. However, there was a popular theory that suggests that we may have been the head of production, which of course would mean that we did know. So which is it? For me, I'm gonna say that the player did know. After all, why would they be guilty? The nightmares focus solely on that aspect. Your conscience finally getting the better of you. So for my scale, I'll say they knew. Claire Harper was a counselor in Playtime Co. that shows up in the Chapter 3 ARG as well as in one of the new VHS tapes. From both of her appearances, she seems to be very protective of the orphans, Mary Payne in particular, who would later become Molly Longlegs. Now, her protectiveness would indicate that she doesn't know, however, there's a key detail I want to point out. But vital, show normal, and we'll continue to monitor. She'll be okay. No! That no indicates she knows what care means at Playtime Co., which, for that alone, I'll say she knew too. Eddie M. N. Ritterman is the head of research at Playtime Co. and has his own tube slide. In Chapter 2, there's a note to a construction site urging secrecy and help in making a lab. That, alongside being one of the five characters to have a slide, shows almost certainly that yes, Eddie knew. Oh boy, this was gonna be controversial. Elliot Ludwig is someone people have been very split about. Some theories suggest that he began the experiments in the first place, putting his daughter into the poppy doll. However, on the other hand, other theories suggest that Ludwig was against the experiments and was killed and put to the prototype, with Lath Pierre usurping the company. On top of this, a radio was shown in the nightmare sequence which told us about a body being found in Ludwig's property. Local authorities report that the body of a young boy has been found on the estate of the late Elliot Ludwig. Assuming this was a real radio broadcast just being replayed in our nightmare, I'm gonna say Ludwig knew. We're probably gonna run to this a few times, but Avery only appears very briefly and only says a few things. They appear in the yellow crane tape in chapter one where they ask where the huggy boxes are and that's it. So I'm just gonna assume they didn't know anything. Harley Sawyer is quite literally the scientist who started the Bigger Bodies initiative, creating Boxy Boo to kill off people who knew too much. So... I think it's safe to say they knew, and we'll move on. The head of security appears so briefly they don't even have a name, and they are only referenced in an image from the ARG which looks to be an email. That doesn't mean we don't know if they knew. From the image, we know that they worked face to face with Elith Pierre, as that's who the email is for. And given some of the other quotes in the censored out sections, it's implied that he knows too, given the dead body the email was referencing was likely a death from a toy like Huggy or the prototype. The interview from the two VHS tapes. He didn't know, let's move on. Jimmy Roth is Playtime Co.'s chief marketing officer. Officer. They don't say much during their interview, but they don't seem to let the interviewer talk much after they talk about their marketing strategies, interrupting him with a massive tangent about the color blue. But even so, it's hard to make heads or tails of it, given this is their only appearance, so I'm just gonna guess that they didn't know. Joel Sinclair is the head counselor at Playcare. In the Chapter 3 ARG, they show concern for Theodore Granbell's imaginary friend, who is the prototype and not nearly as imaginary as I'm sure the company would like. On another paper in the ARG, the one transcribing a conversation he had with Thomas Clark, where pieces are missing from it, he and Clark talk about about Theodore's accident, in which he was electrocuted and wheeled into the ambulance. Given Joel doesn't bring up anything about the prototype, and also seems to care a lot for the kids, much like Claire Harper, I'm gonna say that Joel didn't know either. With Pierre, he knows. He spoke with Catnap on a VHS, calling him by his orphan name. He has his own slide. He warns intruders about his security measures, so of course, Lath Pierre knows. Lisa Botian is the head of Home Sweet Home, though nothing else is known about her, so I'll just assume she didn't know. Jacksepticeye- <clears throat> I mean, Marcus Brickley appeared in Chapter 2 VHS tape talking with Lath Pierre about a monster sighting, suspected to be PJ Pugapillar. Given how terrified Marcus is, and given how Lath Pierre tries to dismiss the sighting as something else, they almost certainly weren't in the loop about the child experiments. Mark Smith appeared in the Chapter 3 ARG, whose name appears in the missing equipment notice, where Theo and the prototype steal green grab packs. And that's it. So, uh, 
Another person that probably didn't know? McCath Pierciado is Leith Pierre's assistant whose only appearance is in Project Playtime for the survival tutorial, to cover for Leith Pierre while he's on a vacation. On top of being connected to Leith Pierre, he refers to Huggy Wuggy as the security guy and seems to know that the living toys eat people. So McCath knows about the experiments. Molly Ludwig divorced Elliot and never really was all that attached to the company outside of being married to its founder, so she didn't know. Nate Carpenter is apparently the employee responsible for making the red smoke. There's no other information about him, but unless he's really dense, he likely knows. I mean, are you really gonna make a specialty sleeping gas for orphans and then not ask any questions? He knows. The Poppy Playtime Wiki categorizes Ollie as being human for some reason, so for the sake of brevity, Ollie knows about the experiments. Patty Hall only really shows up in two letters, one in chapter two where they sabotaged a batch of toy colors for an unknown reason, and then a second where because of this they were demoted and sent to storage B. Although there's speculation that the toys were discolored because Patty Hall knew and was trying to spread awareness, I don't buy it. So I'll stick them in not knowing for now. Rowan Stoll has a whole ARG about them finding out about the experiments and then being killed off for it, so they knew but weren't a supporter of them. Samuel Lee has only mentioned the VHS tape Samuel Lee's last day, in which someone named Dr. White has apparently selected him the children must say goodbye. Whereas the children could be heard clapping, there are screams that can be heard which are said to be Samuel's. Although they're technically an experiment, seeing as they're an orphan, I fear I'd count them seeing as we don't know for sure what toy they'd become, if they even became one. But if the screaming really is his, then he knew what was about to happen. Goodbye, Sam! <laughs> Stella Graber is the head of play care and is a very interesting case. Although they are one of the five names listed on the slides, meaning they are very high up, they have a VHS tape in chapter 3 that suggests they don't know. While speaking with Mr. and Mrs. Hartman, two parents looking to adopt a child named Jeremy, Stella becomes noticeably confused when she sees Jeremy's form and says testing. Her reaction seems to suggest that she doesn't know what it means and she becomes incredibly anxious about it. Miss Graber, we deserve a better explanation than that, don't you think? You're in charge of all this! How could you not know? And why are we only finding out about this now? I... I don't. I'm sorry. So surprisingly, she doesn't know. Or at least I believe so. Mr. and Mrs. Clark both don't know, seeing as they came from outside of the company, but hey, as long as they aren't pulling in Oaxis, right? Welcome to... Oh, wow. Thomas Clark knew about the experiments, of course, as they requested to be turned into a toy after he developed terminal lung cancer. The WLE4 newscaster wasn't a part of Playtime Co. and seems to be going pretty hard on the company for the catnap recall, so it's safe to assume that he doesn't know about the experiments. Rich is a hard worker at Playtime Co. who complains in several VHS tapes throughout the series. He seems to be a rather low-level worker and almost certainly doesn't know about the experiments, as he complains about how the orphans are heavily sheltered and how they aren't even allowed to talk to them. If he's complaining about that, he certainly would be complaining about the experiments too if he knew about them. Stuart is a higher up employee that is going on retirement soon and is being pressured to pick a replacement. Not enough information. Part of me feels like Stuart may be picking Rich to spite the company as, after all, Stuart compliments Rich for being honest to a fault, which the company certainly wouldn't like in a higher up given what the company does. However, there's no substantial proof pointing one way or the other, seeing as he only shows up once, so I'll have to say he doesn't know. And lastly, the person I'm sure you all were waiting for. Greg Fickatow, whose wiki page has nothing. Apparently his name is in the counselor's office, but, uh, yeah, there's nothing to say about this guy. Because he's secretly the mastermind behind it all. Just look at that evil glare, and the image of him that does not exist. His devilish eyelashes, that cunning look. It was him all along. He knew about the experiments and was proud of them. Every night he'd go into the orphan smashing chambers and he'd smile. That bastard. So, that's every human character. Of the 28 characters we talked about, a whopping 13 characters knew about the child experiments. For reference, that's 46% of all human characters not counting the experiments. That's almost 50-50. Do you disagree with any of my choices? Who do you think knows and doesn't know about the child experiments? Also, be sure to check out the Puppy Playtime Chapter 3 song I made called Rejoice. It has a lot of animation, a lot of hard work went into it, so please, please, please give it some love. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you around. Peace!